Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to lecture 17 of Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics. In today's lecture, we will uh, sort of build on the recap of regression analysis as uh, you know, uh, uh, overview of regression analysis that we completed in the previous lecture. More particularly, we will start to relax the assumptions of a multiple linear regression model that you know ensures that the least squares estimator was a best unbiased uh, linear estimator, right? So we will start to relax those, uh, particularly when spatial dependence exists in data and then try and see what are the implications or consequences of spatial dependence on the properties of a least squares estimator. And in case there are adverse impacts or consequences, how do we sort of go about fixing them? Okay, so let's begin by you know specifying uh, spatial dependence in uh, in in uh, uh, a regression model. So I have started. I've sort of proposed to start with this uh, you know uh, time series analysis uh, uh, analog, where we have this concept of a lag or a shift. So in case of time series uh, regression models or time series models or time series econometrics we are typically modeling a variable, a dependent variable y at time t as a function of uh, its own value in the previous period t minus 1 or the periods before it, let's say, t minus k in general. So, you know, if I'm trying to model, for example, groundwater level uh, levels data, then I, at time period t, I have my dependent variable as groundwater level at time t, which is, let's say, gt, and I'm typically modeling it as a function of beta 1 plus beta 2 g t minus 1 and often even going beyond just the first time lag onto let's say a, a general uh, you know uh, 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 value of let's say uh, g t minus k right. So then uh, okay one second so I have I should have beta k plus 1 just for just for consistency and then apart from that I have some I will have some other covariate z uh, you know let's say it's a it's a matrix and then we have a uh, you know a vector of coefficients gamma which are non groundwater level data I mean you can have data on agricultural activity on policies on the aquifer structure on weather or climatic conditions and so on and so forth. Right? So, this idea of a time lag in case of a time series uh, regression model is now extended to this idea of a spatial lag in case of a uh, spatial lag model. Right? So, in case of spatial lag, what we can, what we can think of doing is that we can have uh, you know, lags uh, uh, spatially in the northward direction, in the southward direction, in the westward direction and the eastward direction that is shift up, shift down, shift left and shift right. So corresponding to gt, now we don't just have gt but we have gi comma j where i and j are nothing but xy coordinates, right. So instead of just working with one index, I work with two indices because the groundwater data are observed in a two-dimensional real space. This is then modeled as a function of the neighborhood uh, groundwater levels, right? That's where the spatial spillovers will come from, right? Similarly, for prices of houses, some, an example that we saw last time, you will have a spillover from the nearby community or the homes located in the nearby community. So, in order to specify spatial dependence, I will definite, I, what I do is, I, I, I include these shift up, shift down, uh, 
shift left and shift right variables along with some other variables x or z right those are the control variables plus the error term you know u i j now spatial dependence can be modeled as a function of g i j but also as a function of the uh, unobserved factor so that is to say that i could just have you know included g i j is equal to uh, 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 you know summation l equals 1 to q x l uh, 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 beta l uh, plus u i j where u i j itself can be modeled as a function of eta u i minus 1 j plus gamma u i plus 1 j and so on and so forth plus a error term epsilon i j. Now spatial dependence in this second type of model is modeled is specified through regression errors. That is to say that there are some systemic factors you know that will affect groundwater levels they may or may not have you know spatial dimension. So x else may or may not be spatially delineated right. For example, the, the, the intercept is basically coming from this column of ones. Now that column of ones is not quite spatially variable right. I mean it is exactly the same at every location and its value is just one right. So some of the xi's on the other hand might be spatially delineated for example the amenities right. Uh, public schools, the roads, the crime rates in that in the locality and so on and so forth will be spatially variable right. Uh, but the error term which is all of that we could not include in the forms of x when, when explaining the variation of you know g i j uh, is exhibiting spatial dependence right. So the spatial dependence can be specified through lags of the variable itself or the lags of you know uh, the error uh, structure okay. Now you know this type of a specification however depends on you know what is called as a regular lattice that is to say that you know I must have data which is distributed spatially in these regular lattices so that if I am at any point i comma j I should be able to shift up shift down, shift left and shift right and exactly find one uh, you know observation uh, 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 in all these directions. What we have seen in the past is that real world data sets do not work like that. They are irregular lattices. You may not be able to find an opportunity of shifting up often times. For example, the northward boundary of the Uttar Pradesh data you know you do not have any scope of shifting up. You may not even have a scope for some in shifting right or shifting left right. So in those cases you know such definitions will not be sufficient. That is why we specifically study this notion of spatially lagged variables okay. So, so we will study this notion of spatially lagged variables uh, uh, formally and this is where the weights matrix and all those concepts start to arise. But before we get there let us study the consequence of spatial dependence on inference in a spatial regression model okay. Let us study the consequences of a of spatial dependence on inference in a special model okay. So, uh, so we are going to start for, with an example we are going to say suppose uh, we have a housing market right where you know we have data for such a market. So, we have housing price data which we denote as p at location vector s n right. This could be alternatively written as p at i comma j or even p i j all of these are alternative analogous uh, you know uh, uh, notations right. Uh, where i and j i and j represent location coordinates represent location co
coordinates uh, on x and y axes respectively right so we are writing a model p s n equals summation l equals 1 to q beta l x l s n remember i am writing x l's as if they are spatially delineated but mo many of them might not be right they might not be variable by space so there you know you have the index i comma j but the value is exactly the same okay plus delta s n such that s n by itself belongs to a set or domain of interest d which consists of these locations s1 till sn okay uh, this is the definition of my domain which is in the two dimensional uh, real space xl such that l equals 1 to q is a collection of uh, q non-random okay remember when i say non-random i'm actually talking about assumption 5 of the regression analysis in previous lecture okay that x's are considered to be non-stochastic okay so i'm i'm when i'm specifying the model i'm actually actively suggesting that these are non-random explanatory variables right that may or may not may not depend on location depend on or you can say vary by it's all the same okay may not depend on location or may not vary by location delta s is my regression error so i'm going to say this is zero mean uh, finite variance Uh, uh, error process you can also call it a regression error just to be very clear that we're talking about the error term in the regression model something that we had used the notation uij consistent till now we are just using delta just for the sake of you know being flexible in notations i think cressy mostly uses this notation so so uh, that's my guess why i have this in my notes so um um, now, this error process exhibits spatial dependence, okay. So, all the spatiality I am assuming in the model that I am studying here is carried forward through the error process. It is possible that, you know, the prices are just dependent on each other, uh, you know, locally and because I did not include lags of you know uh, of prices themselves in this model or excels are not lags of prices uh, all those uh, all that effect is now sucked into u or delta s right which is the error term which is something which is giving me everything that it did not include the model so it is possible that delta is expect is is, is exhibiting spatial dependence in accordance with you know uh, 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 you know the price uh, variation locally right or the local dependence local spatial dependence in prices but it is also possible that some of the x's might exhibit you know uh, uh, spatial dependence for example uh, you know uh, uh, if i look at school quality it is possible that good schools are clustered together so then you know if i'm including xl which let's say you know uh, represents school quality or certain type of a public amenity then it might have its own spatially dependent variables and because i did not include those in my uh, you know in my regression model on the right hand side they are also sitting in in delta right so delta by itself is exhibiting spatial dependence of complex types it can come from the prices that is the psn uh, you know local very uh, clustering there or and slash or local clustering in one or two more of the x uh, you know explanatory variables that may exhibit spatial dependence okay so mathematically we say that we have expectation of delta 
S n equals 0 and we have the covariance of delta at location u and lo at location v equals sigma squared rho to the power u minus v that is the distance or the spatial lag that determines the distance between the locations u and v right now u is between a uh, row is between 0 and 1 okay so it's not equal to 0 that means you know that's covariance structure is non zero okay so uh, 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 this is non zero which implies which implies that we have relaxed assumption 3 in the traditional regression analysis i would say refer lecture 16 okay so if you refer to lecture 16 you will, you will now realize that we have relaxed assumption 3 where assumption 3 you know uh, 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 required that uh, had had two conditions that you know when u is equal to v then the covariance uh, 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 of delta u comma delta u which is nothing but equal to the variance of delta u is equal to sigma squared which is a constant and does not depend on the location right so this is a constant okay the second thing it required was that whenever u is not equal to 3 v that is we are look we are standing on two different locations in space then this covariance of delta u and delta v is equal to 0 okay so 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 this is what a3 required right a3 entailed that the covariance of errors at two different locations is 0 and you know whenever you are at the same location u and v are exactly the same that is the diagonal element of the variance covariance matrix that is exactly the same throughout this uh, you know data sample right so this amounted to what we called as errors are spherical we also say that this assumption is also called as the assumption of homoscedasticity right now that we have that covariance is not equal to 0 we have covariance not equal to 0 basically implies that a3 is violated a3 is violated okay so now we have established that whenever spatial dependence exists in uh, in in a uh, through the error terms in a regression model assumption a3 which is the assumption of spherical errors homoscedastic errors is violated okay so as a next step what we are going to do is we are going to work with a simpler example a simple example simple linear regression model and figure out you know the consequence of uh, you know uh, 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 of of this spatial dependence on the estimation of early squares uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, coefficients of the regression model okay so we are going to work with you know i'm going to say let us work with a simple linear regression model so when i say that we are working with a simple linear regression model all i mean is that i'm going to set q equals 2 that is i have a model of price which looks at p s n equals beta 1 plus beta 2 so the coefficient beta 1 is coefficient to just one so x l x 1 is just one at all locations s n um, plus beta 2 i am going to keep this as r uh, you know s n just to keep continuity from our previous lecture where i modeled the price of a home with a, uh, an index of spaciousness or the number of rooms that are available in that home or house okay plus the error term delta s n 
uh, such that you know S n belongs to S 1, S 2, keep going till S capital N which is in the two dimensional real space. Just to keep my notation consistent, you are encouraged to write these things down with your own pen and pencil, uh, you know, paper on a pen and paper, you know, although when you look at these things that they might look that they are flowing naturally, but trust me when you actually do it them by them by yourself, you will get stuck and that's where the opportunity to learn comes. So please don't just look at the screen and let you know, uh, see me do it. You should definitely write these things out at least twice on your own, uh, you know, apart from the lecture itself. So that's when you will start to really get a sense of what are we doing in these, uh, you know, uh, how the math is flowing, how we're inter interpreting it with English and vice versa, okay. With that, I'm saying that covariance of delta u and delta v is equal to sigma square rho u minus v, right? So we have relaxed A3, right? Um, we are also saying that x1, if I go by the notation that I had used earlier, was equal to 1 for all Si's or Sn's in D, right? And x2 is now specified to be the number of rooms in the house for which we are studying, the houses that we are working on the real estate price model for, right? So uh, this is nothing but number of rooms uh, uh, in the house, in house, located at Sn, which is nothing but an x and a y coordinate. So you can say i n j n. So these are just notation, right? I mean, don't get stuck with notation or don't start worrying about notation so much that we don't really understand. We need to understand what we are really saying here, right? Notation is fluid. We can use different notation. You can use, you know, not i comma j, you like k comma l, go ahead, use it. You like m comma n, use it. A comma B, whatever, right? That's not the point. The point is that we need to understand that there are some indices that are representing location. The location is being represented with a two dimensional real space. So it's X, Y coordinate. If it were three dimensional, we will have X, Y, and Z, the coordinates, right? So the spatiality will become more and more complex, but these tools will, 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 will remain uh, consistent throughout, right? So that's the point. So in the previous lecture, so I'm gonna say in, lecture 16, um, we uh, uh, introduced and actually went over the least squares algorithm where we minimize the sum of squared errors, errors and recover data driven estimates beta 1 hat least squares and beta 2 hat least squares, right? So the hat is a notation that this is a data driven answer. This is actually a number which we have backed out from the data and the algorithm that we have applied is minimizing the sum of squared errors. This algorithm is intuitive. We are ultimately, we want to minimize, we are trying to, you know, fit a model, find a very good, as good a fit as possible uh, uh, in terms of modeling, you know, P prices, uh, housing prices. And we want, as we do that, we want to minimize the error. Now you one can say, why don't you, you know, sum the error and minimize it. Now the error could be positive and negative. If we don't square them, what's going to happen is the positive errors are going to cancel the negative errors. But that's, but be, just because a, an error is positive and uh, in nature and the other one is negative in nature, doesn't mean that they are actually be, supposed to be canceled. They are supposed to be both penalized for being erroneous uh, at the time of, you know, in terms of prediction. 
So in order to penalize both positive and negative errors, we squared them, right? So once we squared them, both positive and negative values convert into a positive value, right? Moreover, as U moves away from zero, the penalty is increasing. So you are penalizing more and more as the error is departing from zero, either on the positive or the negative side. So squaring the errors, that is, you know, uh, adding the positives and the negatives, and then penalizing them by an exponent of two, it, it, as they depart from zero, which is my, you know, uh, 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 point of desire, desirability, that errors are zero, as they depart from there, I penalize them by an exponent two, then I sum them together, that's the sum of squared errors, somehow the variation that I could not explain in the model. I want to minimize, I want to choose beta one and beta two, such that this un, you know, modeled variation is minimized given the model specification, the systemic portion of the regression, okay? So once I have this, what I'm trying to do here is when I say that I'm going to minimize sum of squared errors, all I've said is that I minimize summation n equals one to capital N P S N minus beta one, beta two R S N squared. And while I do that, I choose beta one and beta two. Right, upon solving, right, solving meaning writing the first order conditions, we have two first order conditions, two equations, two unknowns, we can solve them. Upon solving, we get our beta one hat least squares as following. It's going to be covariance between the price variable, the dependent variable, and uh, you know, so this is beta two. So this is the coefficient on the spacious number of rooms. So the coefficient that we back out from data is going to be how well, you know, the prices and number of rooms are covarying. So covariance of, you know, uh, uh, PSN and RSN divided by or normalized by the variance of RSN. Okay, this is a typical uh, popular, you know, uh, when I teach econometrics, I ask my students to learn this by heart. This is one thing they should learn by heart. Other things they can, uh, you know, uh, they don't need to learn anything. But this is one of those things that, you know, even if you, uh, if, I, if I wake you up at 3 a.m. at night and I ask you, what is beta 2 hat OLS, which is the coefficient of x when we are looking at the impact of x on y, it's going to be the covariance of x and y. That is, how well are they covarying normalized by the variance of x itself, right? So this is the formula and, you know, uh, 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 it turns out to be looking as the following n equals one to n. So the, the so we will write the covariance formula that we know from our basic statistics course divided by n equals one to n r s n minus r bar the whole squared. Now very interestingly, you have to see that you know. When we defined, when we sort of specifying the model, we said that X cells are assumed to be non-random or non-stochastic. So in the formulation of beta two hat OLS, you have R, which is an analog of the explanatory variable, which is going to be assumed to be non-stochastic. So it is a deterministic variable. There is no, it's not that R will take multiple values and there is some, you know, when we, when we represent R, we don't really say that number of rooms is three plus minus something. We say no, number of rooms in a home, in a house is three, exactly three or four or two or one or whatever, right? So this number is exact and it is non-stochastic, right? It is a degenerated variable. Price of the whole house on the other hand is, is considered, a, considered a random variable, right? As a statistician or econometrician, I begin by saying that I am viewing the world as, as stochastic, and I'm going to try and explain it with some systemic portion, which is beta one plus beta two R, right? But inherently, this process is overall random in nature. And all that randomness is now, you know, in the regression model sitting with the error term. But having said that, the fact that beta two hat OLS is a function of P, which is considered as a random variable means that the estimator by itself is a random variable. 
That is to say that when we look at the estimator, it is not going to be a point estimate only, but also there will be a precision, uh, you know, uh, 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 metric for it. That is, it could, it by itself is a random variable, right? So this is a random variable. That means it can take multiple values with different probabilities. And that implies that I should be able to, you know, draft a precision metric for this beta 2 hat OLS. And indeed, a, a predi, uh, you know, a precision metric that is the variance of this beta 2 hat OLS, how varying, varying this, uh, you know, how precise is this beta 2 hat OLS as a point estimate. And in terms of what is possible for beta 2 hat OLS, what are the extremes that are possible, right, with, with, with let's say 95% probability or something uh, alike. So it is given as sigma squared, which remember is again a model parameter, right, in the covariance, variance covariance structure of the error term. So this covariance is called as the variance, covariance structure of model error. Okay, so the variance of beta 2 hat OLS is given as summation sigma squared over summation n equals 1 to capital N r s n minus r bar the whole squared. Okay, this, this is the, these are the results that you're going to get. This is the result that you're going to get when you, when you apply minimization of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, sum of squared errors. Uh, in the presence of spatial dependence. Now, if we, are, we had assumed no spatial dependence, we would get this exact same results. So then what does spatial dependence really do, right? So, so the next step is to evaluate, right? So the next step, right? So the next step is to evaluate the implication of, uh, 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 you know, spatial dependence in model errors on, uh, uh, you know, on the least squared uh, squares estimators. So we will have to evaluate, you know, the, the form that we see beta 2 hat OLS that is uh, you know, covariance of P and R over the variance of R and the variance of beta 2, beta 2 hat OLS, which is sigma squared over variance of R. How does this, you know, what's the implication of spatial dependence on these? Because if we had no spatial dependence, we will still get the same beta 2 hat OLS and the same variance of beta 2 hat OLS. So what changed, right? What is it that we should worry about then? That is what we are going to uh, look at in the next step and we'll come back to it in the next part of this lecture. Thank you.